Hello, boys and girls. Welcome once again to Storytime with Noni. We are on chapter three of the story called No Darkness at All. Hamid took Kinza outside and he said to her, Kinza, I am going to have to leave you for a little while now. I'm going to leave you with a very nice lady, but if you cry, she will beat you. <gasps> Kinza knew what it meant to be beat and she did not want to be beaten. So even if her brother was going to have to leave her, she decided she would not cry. Hamid gently carried Kinza over to the oh. door. There were a bunch of little boys about his age, all dirty like him, sitting on the floor and they were chanting some words, only it didn't sound like it came from the Quran, his uh, Mohammedan Bible. It was the same kind of chanting, but different words. They were saying, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. They were saying that over and over, and Hamid, hating darkness, thought that sounded wonderful. The light of life? No darkness? He wanted more than anything not to have to walk in darkness. Well, he sat Kinza down, kissed her on top of her head, and turned around and walked away. Hamid left his little sister and went and found a rubbish heap that he could sit on top of and watch the English woman's house. He was thinking about their words, oh, how wonderful it would be not to have to walk in darkness, to have light of life. He knew about candlelight, the sunlight, the moonlight, but he didn't know about this light of life. Well, pretty soon the boys started coming out and they were talking about this little blind girl. Who was she? Where did she come from? Where were her mommy and daddy? Nobody knew. And they walked on and he kept looking at the house. And after a bit, he saw a light come on in the window upstairs. And he saw a silhouette of the English lady carrying his little sister, Kinza. Kinza was reaching up to touch her face. That was how Kinza could see with her hands. She didn't seem to be afraid at all. Hamid thought, the light is so wonderful. He thought back about all the nights that he had traveled with Kinza on his back, in the dark, so afraid all the time, all the time afraid. Here it was, nighttime again, afraid again. He fell asleep thinking how nice it would be if there were no darkness at all. Well, in the morning, Hamid woke up very hungry. He started walking through the streets. He noticed other little boys that were hungry, who <laughs> looked hungry like him. And then his nose led him to a donut maker's little tent. And he was building up a fire, sticking dough in, in the oil to fry it up real nice. And then he'd string those up on, on a string and hang them up for people to come and buy. Hamid was so hungry. He noticed after a little bit that the, the donut maker was getting frustrated because he had to keep stopping to build up the fire. So he went up to him boldly. He was so hungry. He said, excuse me, sir, could you use an assistant? Would you like some help? And the donut maker looked him up and down and said, sure, can you keep the fire going? And Hamid said, yes, sir, I can. So Hamid got the bellows. <coughs> He'd put wood in the fire and blow the bellow air on it to keep it going. And after about two hours of hard work, the man said, boy, did you eat breakfast this morning? Hamid said, no, sir, I didn't. 
Well, did you eat dinner last night? No, sir, I didn't. Well, he gave Hamid some donuts to eat. Oh, they tasted so good. And then it got to be lunchtime, and the man closed down shop and gave Hamid a couple little coins for helping him. Well, he started to walk down the street and noticed that there were several other boys about his age following him. And after a little bit, they got really close to him and they said, Hey, what's your name? Where'd you come from? Where's your mom and dad? And Hamid was very careful in how he answered them. And he said, Well, I needed work, so I came here to this village to get some work. My mom and dad are dead. I just live in the streets. They said, well, we live in the streets too. And hey, if you will buy some bread and share it with us, with that money you just got, we'll show you where you can get a good hot meal for dinner tonight. Well, that sounded pretty good to Hamid. So he did. He bought some bread, shared it with the boys. He had no idea that the place that they were going to take him to get dinner was going to be the English lady's home. That is exactly where they led Hamid that night. He stepped in the door and oh, it smelled so good. And there in the corner sat little Kinza. He was so happy to see her. She was all cleaned up. She had a pretty little dress on. Her hair was combed nice and, and oh, he was, he could hardly take his eyes off of his little sister, but he realized he had to be very quiet because if he said something, she would recognize his voice. Well, Hamid sat there and heard the story about Jesus, who the lady, the English lady said, was the light of the world. The English lady began to explain how Jesus was God and he lived in heaven where there was no darkness at all. But because he wanted to pay the price for our sin, to take it away from us so we could go live in heaven with him, he became a baby. And he grew up to be a man who died on the cross, which paid the penalty for our sin so we could be forgiven. Jesus rose from the dead so that we could someday rise from the dead and live in heaven with Jesus. And Hamid was thinking, if I could have paid the price, a high enough price, a higher price than that old beggar offered for Kinza, I would have done it. Hamid listened while the, while the English lady explained that if we ask Jesus to forgive our sins, he does. And he is the light of life that comes in and helps us never have to live in the darkness of sin ever again. Hamid wanted this more than anything. No darkness at all. Well, his fear left him for a little bit and he spoke out. And all of a sudden, Kinza stood up and ran right towards Hamid, the voice that she knew. She wrapped her arms around him and Hamid held her in his arms. And the English lady noticed the resemblance between the two. Are you this little girl's brother? He said, yes, I am Kinza's brother. Well, after all the boys left, she said, Hamid, I want you to stay. I want to talk to you. I'm going to go put uh, Kinza to bed now, and I will be right back. So just stay here. So she took Kinza upstairs. Hamid was looking around the room, and he saw a bowl with eggs in it. And he was thinking about how good those eggs would taste in the morning when he woke up hungry. So he took a couple of them and tucked them into his shirt. Well, 
when the English lady came back down, she said, Hamid, come over here in the light. I want to talk to you. And Hamid said, no, I like it right here. But that let the English lady know that something was not right because she knew that no little Mohammedan children liked darkness. They were afraid of it. So she said, Hamid, I want you to pick up your arms. And when he did, and she patted, there were the eggs and they smushed on him. Oh my goodness, now he was a mess. The English lady said, Hamid, I care about you. I love you and I am going to forgive you for taking these eggs that did not belong to you. But Hamid, I don't want you to ever steal from me again because you see, stealing is sin and sin is darkness. Jesus came to forgive you of all your sins so that there would be no darkness in you. Hamid started crying. He very rarely cried. He thought it was a bad thing to cry, but right now it felt good to cry. And he said, yes, I want my sins forgiven. I don't want there to be darkness in me. For the first time, he truly was sorry for stealing. He wasn't just sorry because he got caught, which was how it used to be. He was actually sorry he had done it because he realized it, it displeased God and he wanted Jesus. So right there in the English lady's house, he knelt down and ask God to forgive him for his sins, to make him clean inside, and for Jesus to come and make his home in him, bring the light of life. And Jesus did. And the nurse said, Hamid, it's so late tonight. Your friends are already tucked away somewhere. Why don't you stay here with me tonight? And that's what Hamid did. He went to bed in a nice clean home that night. And that, boys and girls, is where we are going to end chapter three of No Darkness at All. Thank you for joining me on Storytime with Noni. We still have two chapters left. So I love you, boys and girls. Bye-bye.